All right, guys. So in this video, we're going to go through some past paper questions on amino acids and proteins. OK, I've had this requested a few times. This is from paper to June 2022, AQA A-level chem. As always, I can't show the actual paper on the screen because of AQA copyright, but I've rewritten it out for us and drawn in the amino acid insert to help us out. Feel free to pause the video, attempt the question yourself, learn from your mistakes and see where you went wrong. So question 4.1, let's jump into this. Proteins are polymers made from amino acids. So the amino acids would be the monomers, right? Part of the structure of a protein is shown below. So we have cysteine, serine, aspartic acid and phenylalanine. OK, you're always going to see these amino acids when they're linked in a chain like this as three letter codes. OK, just keep that in mind. Is the protein structure above primary, secondary or tertiary? OK, only one mark here up for grabs. Really easy question. You just have to know the difference between primary, secondary and tertiary proteins. So what do you think this is? Is this primary, secondary or tertiary? So before I answer this, I'm just going to go through the differences just so that you're aware. So real simple primary is just a straight sequence of amino acids connected together by peptide bonds, right? So you've got all these different amino acids in a straight chain connected by peptide bonds. OK. Now, with secondary proteins, you get two types. Firstly, we have the alpha helices. OK, this is where you have the primary proteins, the primary polymers bonded together by hydrogen bonds in between the chains. But then the beta pleated sheet involves folding. OK, but they both involve more than one primary chain or primary sequence of amino acids. So lastly, then we have tertiary. This is where you get a bunch of different secondary proteins all bundled together. OK, they form bonds with one another. They can either be hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds or sulfur bridges or disulfide bonds. And they sort of bundle together and fold into these globular structures. OK, so an example of a tertiary protein would be an enzyme. Right. But if you're doing biology, you'll know that enzymes can also be quaternary. So we'll skip that for now. and Just focus on chemistry. So going back to this question, then, is it primary, secondary or tertiary off the information that I just provided you with? It is primary. OK, as you can see here, hopefully I didn't really need to go into as much detail as I just did. But if there was a different question where it was actually secondary or tertiary, you would have needed to know that theory. OK, but this case, it's just primary. Easy one mark to start us off with. Right. Question 4.2. We need to draw a structure for the cysteine serine section of the protein and we can use our data booklet. So I've redrawn this out from our data booklet, also known as the insert. OK, so you're given these six amino acids here, the structures of each of them, and you can use them to solve this question. Really, really easy three mark question when you realize what's going on. OK, so let me break it down for you. They've asked us to draw out this structure, right? So we have a trailing bond, then a cysteine amino acid, then a bond between the cysteine and the serine and then another trailing bond. That's exactly what we want to do. And you just want to replicate this sequence, but using the full structures. OK, now there's one more thing you need to know. I'm going to go through it right now. So all you want to do is look at your insert. You want to isolate cysteine or find cysteine on there. And you also want to find serine. So that's these two right here. Now, I'm going to start with my cysteine drawn on the left hand side and then my serine drawn on the right hand side, because that's how they've asked us to lay it out in this structure. So let's start right here. I'm just going to literally draw out. Cysteine, so H2N, CH, COOH. CH2, SH. OK, now some of you that know the answer to this and that have been doing these questions for a while, you may think like, what the hell is he doing? He's doing it completely wrong. I'm doing that on purpose. OK, I just want to demonstrate to you guys that don't really understand what's going on, what you need to do. OK, so this is our cysteine. I'm going to draw this out first. I'm going to change up my color here and draw out our serine. So again, I'm going to have H2N. CHCOOH. And then say CH2OH, right? There's a bond there as well. So this is our two amino acids. All we need to do is bond them together in some way and then show the trailing bonds. That is all we need to do here for three marks, like easiest three marks of your life. 
So what we need to understand here is the bond that forms between two amino acids is referred to as a peptide bond. Okay, peptide bond. Now, another word for a peptide bond is simply an amide bond. Okay, amide bond, peptide bond, exactly the same thing. So how are we going to form that here? What happens is this COOH, let's draw this out in full actually, so it's not just written out like that. So what we have is this COOH, this is an amino acid end functional group, right? This is going to react with our NH2. Let's draw this out, NH2. Okay, what happens is we get rid of a water molecule. So we would get rid of this OH and we would get rid of this H. They go off as H2O. And then all we're left with, if we transform this, let's draw this out, is a carbonyl CO bonded to an NH. Okay, and then bonded to the rest of the amino acid on either side. It's as simple as that, guys. This is our peptide bond, our peptide linkage, whatever you want to call it, or also an amide bond. Okay, this is an amide functional group. And that's exactly what you want to do when you're drawing it out in your question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rub this out quickly and signify exactly what I just did here. So I'm going to show the double bonded oxygen right here. And I'm going to show the NH right here. You can do the NH at the top or the CO at the bottom. It honestly doesn't matter as long as you show them next to each other with a link in between them. So I'm going to do that in blue right there. Right. That would be our first point. We need to show the peptide linkage or the amide linkage, amide bond, whatever you want to call it. And we would refer to this as a dipeptide. We've got one peptide here, one peptide here, forming a peptide bond referred to as a dipeptide. Okay, so that's our first thing. Now, one thing we haven't shown is the trailing bonds. Okay, and what the trailing bonds signify is that there's going to be another amino acid on either side. Okay, and we have to show that. So in exactly the same way that this NH came from an NH2 to an NH, we need to do the exact same thing here and how this CO carbonyl ultimately came from a carboxylic acid. We just have to do the exact same thing on the right hand side. So super simple here. I'm going to change that to be an NH. Exactly the same as this. And this is going to trail off onto the side of another amino acid, the CO part. OK, so on, if there if we had to draw a longer chain here, there'd be another carbonyl bond for another peptide bond. OK, but don't show that here because we're only dealing with two amino acids. And then on this side, you would have the CO double bond carbonyl group with a trailing bond on it. OK, simple as that. Hopefully that helps you guys out if you're struggling with drawing out these peptides, these proteins. It's pretty simple when you understand that you just have to show the peptide bond or the amide bond and then show the trailing bonds and imagine that there's other amino acids present on either side in the protein chain. All right, so where do our marks come from here? Real simple. So first mark is going to be from this right here, the peptide or amide bond in the middle. Next mark is going to come from including the correct R groups in the amino acid. So you'd want the correct R group for cysteine, and the correct R group for serine, all good there. And my bad guys, looking through the mark scheme, I just realized this is actually a two mark question, not a three mark. Now, another thing that AQA has done here that I find pretty annoying is that they do not require trailing bonds, okay? They've specified it in the mark scheme that these trailing bonds aren't required. Please don't do that. Please just put the trailing bonds. It's gonna make you better in general as a chemist or whatever, and it's the right thing to do. So just. Try and add those in, but AQA does not require it, okay? Now, something else that they also allow you to do is to flip these two around, okay? So you can put the serine on the left and the cysteine on the right. I don't know why you would do this. I think it's easier to just replicate the sequence or the format that they've given to you in the question. But if you did it the other way around, completely fine, you'd still get the marks, okay? So that's two marks right there. My mistake, not three. Right, question 4.3, name the other substance formed when two amino acids react together to form part of a protein chain. Super easy one, Mark. 
go back to this. What did I say forms when we form an amide or a peptide bond or a link? H2O, right? So going back to our question here, they've asked us to name the substance formed water. All right, that's your one mark answer here, water. It's not going to change. Always going to be water, regardless of the amino acids that are reacting, okay? Now, they do allow you to put H2O, but H2O is not a name, okay? This is a chemical formula, so I'd say stick with water, but AQA allow H2O. All right, guys, question 4.4. Four marks up for grabs here, all right? And it's, a, it's actually four marks this time. So let's see what's happening and read through the question. So a general structure of an amino acid is shown right up here. We have H2N central C carbon here with a hydrogen bonded to it. Carboxylic acid group right here, amine group right here. They have an R group, okay? And it tells us in the question, R represents a group that varies between different amino acids. R groups can interact and contribute to protein structure, all right? Explain why the strength, so that's our command word, explain. Explain why the strength of the interaction between two cysteine R groups differs from the strength of the interaction between a serine R group and an aspartic acid R group. And we need to use the data booklet to help us answer it. So very similar to our previous question, I'm just going to look at which amino acids in our insert, in our data booklet are involved here. So we're dealing with cysteine, aspartic acid, and serine. So I'm gonna rub out all the ones that don't apply here. All right, so I've got rid of the amino acids that we just don't care about, and I've focused only on cysteine, serine, and aspartic acid. Now they've asked us specifically regarding the R group interactions. So the R group right here, as shown in our example amino acid, is bonded to the carbon right here. So it's gonna be this one right here, this one right here, this one right here, okay? These are our R groups and they're going to interact differently depending on which amino acids are bonded to what. So I'm gonna focus on serine and aspartic acid R group interactions first, and then we'll move on to the cysteine after. Okay, so let's do the R groups of the serine and the aspartic acid first. Right, so I've written out here that the R groups of serine and aspartic acid are an alcohol and a carboxylic acid respectively. So if you look at serine here, this is an alcohol. Aspartic acid, it's in the name acid, it's gonna be a carboxylic acid group. And both of these can form hydrogen bonds, okay? So that's going to be the interaction between the two hydrogen bonds. Whereas when we look at cysteine right here, this is a sulfur containing R group, okay? So it's a sulfide group. What can two sulfide groups form? they can form what's referred to as a disulfide bridge, okay? And these are actually covalent bonds between the two sulfurs, okay? So if I ask you, which is stronger, the hydrogen bonds that occur between the serine and the aspartic acid, or the sulfide bonds that occur between two cysteine R groups, it's going to be the sulfide bonds, okay? The, the disulfide bridges, and that's because they're covalent, okay? Covalent bonds are formal bonds. They're far more stronger than the intermolecular forces of hydrogen bonds. So let me write that out and see what's going on. So that's exactly what I wrote out, guys. The R group of cysteine is a sulfide group, okay? It contains a sulfur. So it will form a disulfide bridge if two of the same amino acid are interacting with one another, right? And the disulfide bridges are stronger than hydrogen bonds. Why are they? Due to being covalent bonds, whereas hydrogen bonds are intermolecular forces only, okay? So let me go over disulfide bridges quickly, just in case you guys aren't aware. I'm gonna to go to a new page because we're completely running out of space. So our side group in cysteine is a CH2SH, right? And then we're gonna have exactly the same thing mirrored on the other side for the other amino acid, okay? Now, what's gonna happen here is one hydrogen's lost here, one hydrogen's lost here, and these two sulfurs form a covalent bond, okay? A shared pair of electrons between them. And this is a formal bond, okay? It's not just an intermolecular force like you would find in alcohols and carboxylic acids forming hydrogen bonds. This is a much stronger bond, okay? So where would our marks come from here? 
first mark is just saying that the serine and aspartic acid R groups form hydrogen bonds. Okay, you don't need to say that one's an alcohol, one's a carboxylic acid. I would say that because I'm trying to scrape every single mark I can, and sometimes they may require you to say that in the mark scheme. But I'm just going to say here, all you need is the hydrogen bonds for this mark. Okay, next up is to say that the two cysteine R groups form a disulfide bridge. Okay, disulfide bridge or disulfide link, both of those would get you the mark. Next up, you need to say that disulfide bridges or linkages are stronger than H bonds. And because our command word is explaining, we need to say why that is. And it's due to the disulfide bridges being covalent, whereas hydrogen bonds are just intermolecular forces. Okay, that would be our fourth mark right here. Right, guys, last question, 4.5. I was running out of space, so I moved it to a new page. Deduce the type of interaction that occurs between a lysine R group and an aspartic acid R group. So real similar to the previous question, we just have to isolate and locate the correct amino acids on our data booklet, our insert, what is the R group, and then compare them, okay? So attempt this yourself. What sort of interaction would occur between these two R groups? It's gonna be ionic, okay? Ionic interactions occur. Why is that the case? So let's draw these out, R groups out and see how they interact. And then a lysine over here. I'm just gonna draw just this part. So I'm not gonna draw the fat off chain. I'm just gonna draw the CH2, NH2. Okay, so this is our R groups. I'm gonna call it R1 and R2 for our two amino acids, right? Now, because this is acidic, this is a carboxylic acid functional group, and this is basic, an amine functional group, there's going to be a transfer of hydrogen ions, okay? We're gonna have one acting as an acid, a proton donor or a hydrogen donor, and one acting as a base, a proton acceptor. Okay, and that's essentially what happens here. This H is gonna be donated by the acid and accepted by the base. Okay, so we're gonna have an NH3 end group forming here, and this makes the nitrogen positive. Now, this oxygen has lost its hydrogen, but it accepted the electron in the lone pair. So it's like this, right? This covalent bond breaks, goes on to there. It has now got a negative charge because it's gained one electron from that covalent bond, okay? So does this look familiar to you? A COO carboxyl, and at NH3+, plus. does this look familiar under the amino acids topic? It really should, I'm really hoping it does. Zwitter ions, okay, this is a Zwitter ion. And the reason I bring this up, and I, I put so much time into it, trying to explain this, is because you need to know this unique interaction between aspartic acid and lysine, okay? And that's because in every single amino acid, you have an amine group and you have a carboxylic acid group. All right, you can see that both here. But the unique case for aspartic acid and lysine is that our group is a carboxylic acid and an amine group, okay? And in that case then, they're going to form the normal Zwitter ion that would occur, but their R groups also form a Zwitter ion, in which case you're going to get further ionic interaction. All right, keep that in mind. So that's it guys, fifth and final question done. Hopefully you found that helpful. Hopefully it helped you out with amino acid and protein questions. If you did find it helpful, be sure to like the video. It really helps the channel out. Best of luck with your revision and upcoming exams, guys. Until next time, peace.